Hello and welcome to the British Dapper and today we're talking about the answers to your necktie questions. So over a period of time I've been doing a Friday's tie choice and uh, had a series of questions put to me about the different ties and queries about certain elements of wearing a tie. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to address these points specifically in a video. So when it comes to wearing a tie, they come in different tie widths and that's the width of the blade. So the width of the blade come in different widths. So here we have a two and a half inch by the looks of it blade. That's this area here. So if you think about the gap, the distance between your fingers is, a width, fingers width is about an inch. So we're talking about two and a half inches there. So this is quite a narrow tie and typically would be worn with a narrow gauged or lapelled suit or jacket. So very typically a skinny tie for a skinny suit or jacket. Um, you can get them even narrower than this, two inches or even an inch and a half. Um, but then they go through into what we'd consider to be a three inch blade, three and a half inch blade. So here we have a three and a half inch blade. And another one here we have gone a little bit more extreme we go from there four inch maybe but this is much more than that this is a four and a half nearly five inch blade and it depends on the era that the tie was made in uh, that would maybe dictate the fashion at the time and you might have a wider fitting tie or a narrow fitting tie but also there are some other elements you need to take into consider when you're looking at employing a tie with a jacket or a suit jacket for example. And that is the width of the lapel. Ideally, the width of the lapel, and that goes across here, is gonna dictate the width of the tie. So with the width of the lapel, being quite wide here, you don't really want to wear a tie that is very narrow. It gets lost in the look, the overall look. So you're looking at potentially with a wider lapel, a wider tie. Now that gives you a wider spread in this area here on the tie and uh, and it fills this void up in the V of the jacket. And it, it pulls it together nicely. So the other thing to consider is the actual tie knot that you use for the shirt that you're going to wear. So if it's a very narrow gap here between the blades of the shirt collar, then you maybe need a narrower knot. If it's cut back wider, then you need probably a thicker or more robust knot, for example, a full Windsor, to fill in that gap. What you ideally want is the shirt collar to just go underneath uh, the jacket rather than be exposed and uh, the tie knot needs to fill the actual gap in the shirt, but not all the way down. So for example, with this shirt, yes, I could get away with a Windsor knot, but a four in hand is a narrow knot, still fills in this gap here, and still looks a nice informal knot to wear. I would suggest try not to go over one third of the length of the collar to be filled with the tie. So in other words, if you come down too far with a big knot, then you end up with a very small gap 
at the end and that doesn't really look good. That's something to consider. And obviously with a wider cutaway shirt, collar, um, a smaller knot actually then exposes the ends of the, the actual tie that goes around your neck. So we don't really want that because aesthetically it doesn't look that good. Again, it comes down to that overarching idea of the sartorial look is to keep things as clean as possible in a way. So the shirt collar goes underneath a jacket. The jacket width in the lapel dictates to a degree the width of the tie. And the reason why I say that is because within an inch either way of the width of the jacket lapel, you can get away with wearing a tie. So the width of the jacket lapel, within reason, you can go an inch either way. So if you get a tie that's a little bit sh narrower than the lapel width, you could get away with that. If it's a little bit wider than the lapel, again, it, it's not a bad look. But the extreme is gonna be where you've got something that is very narrow and uh, it's lost and it looks out of proportion with the jacket. The other thing to consider when you think about buying a tie, don't just buy it because you see it and you like it. Consider have you got an outfit for it? Buy it as an addition to your ensemble rather than just a one-off purchase, thinking, oh, I'll, I'll make that fit my ensemble or I'll create one around it. So it might be worth thinking, well, I've got a blazer, I've got a blue shirt, I've got a pair of flannel trousers, what would go well with that? And then go out specific to source that tie that fits that ensemble. And maybe, it would be wise to take the jacket with you. So wear the jacket, maybe wear another tie with it. And then when you're in the store, you can actually pick up a tie and look at it against what you're gonna wear. Pinch it when you put it up to see if you get a good look and uh, try the tie on with the knot. But at least offer it to your throat, pinch it so you can see what the knot might look like, and then lift it up and see what the aesthetics of the tie might look like when it's on. It's always the best way to go because you might actually realize that it doesn't look very good or the color is not right or you know, there are a number of issues with a tie because it's not just a case of the width of the blade, but it's also about the thickness of the tie. So for example, here, I've used two ties. They are the same tie width. They're narrow ties. They're about two and a half inches, but one is actually a little bit thicker than the other one. Now there's a significant difference in that. When you actually tie the tie, you're gonna get a smaller knot and a thinner knot. So it's something to consider when you're purchasing that tie. Interestingly, today I had a little walk around a local shop. When I was looking around, all the ties in the store were three inches, three and a quarter inches, that sort of width. And when I went around quite a high-end fashion store, um, there were no skinny suits on the rack anymore. Admittedly, there were slim fitting suits and tailored suits and regular suits, but um, 
they had a more wider lapel. So things are changing slowly from that skinny look. And with a skinny suit, maybe a thick, really uh, wide tie is not really gonna go as well as a maybe a more narrow tie because with a narrow suit, with a slim fitting or skinny fit suit, then it's all about proportion. So you're gonna have a narrow two inch lapel, potentially. So a big tie might little be a little bit over exaggerated and uh, might not be such a good look to go for. So when it comes to colors as well, colors are one of those things, do they, enhance the look you want? Do they mute it or dull it down? And I have a couple of examples here for you to consider. For example, I've got this one here. It is quite um, quite a bright colour in, in a sense that it's a lime colour or an apple colour. But actually with a blue shirt it can actually look quite um, cold um, when you actually put it on. So this is great if you want that sort of look. Whereas if you wear something like this with a blue shirt you get a completely different vibe and this is a lot warmer. So although we have two similar ties in that they are same material um, they have different effects on, on your uh, overall look. So when it comes to the tie itself uh, and the different knots, um, I put a video out, five different ways to tie a tie knot. And I'll put a link here for you. And uh, that is for showing you five different knots from informal knots to more formal knots and it gives you a range of knots to use uh, depending on the look you're going for, the collar, the cut on the collar and also the effect you want to uh, have with the tie itself. Um, it does go into more detail about the collar length and the knot um, as well as um, the overall look. So it's something you might want to consider looking at. But with the tie, we then come to the pocket square. Now, I know that you can get pocket squares with a matching tie. I would suggest if you do that, don't wear them together wear them separately with other similar ties. So for example, in this case, there's some reds, there's some blues, and there's some golds in the tie. But in the pocket square, I've picked up the same colors, but the ratio is different. So because there's mostly red in here, in here we've got mostly golds, and very small amounts of blues and reds. But they do pick up the same color schemes. They complement each other in that way. So it might be worth, when you're doing that, to mix and match. So if you've got a tie with a matching pocket square and you've got, for example, a different range of blues, then maybe swap them over with another tie set that with a matching pocket square. So you wear a different pocket square with the tie and it gives you versatility. But I would say, even, even though it's not from a sartorial point of view, the best way to go, um, I wouldn't condemn somebody for wearing the same color pocket square or same pattern as the tie, because at least you're wearing a pocket square, at least you're wearing a tie, and you learn from your experience what's better, good, or indifferent for yourself. I hope this answers some of your questions. There's such a, 
variation to consider, but essentially just uh, touching on the final summary, if you like, the width of the lapel can dictate the width of the tie blade at the, um, at the base of the tie. And the knot used can be dictated by the shirt collar and the cut of the shirt. So with those things in mind and a bit of practice, you can get a really good look um, that comes together nicely. Now, I always pull my shirt, my tie forward a little bit and it gives it a nice little arch to the tie. And if you wear a dimple in the tie, that can also enhance the look and create um, a nice aesthetic as well. I would say that a dimple actually goes better with a plain tie or something more plain than busy or patterned because because of the pattern you tend to lose it a little bit um, so hope you enjoyed the video if you did give us a thumbs up if you'd like to subscribe then please feel free to do so we love constructive comments so if you want to make an observation or a statement then please jock it down below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can we have a buy me a coffee page so if you'd like to support the channel then please feel free to make a contribution i'll put the link down below so until next time take care